Hello, guys. And that ancient economic deity, Jerome Powell, has signaled that he might be ready to cut rates, not this month, but maybe in September, which is two months earlier than I expected. And that is going to be a 25 basis point cut before the election. Now, some of you are, he's just doing it for political reasons. Actually, no, if he was going to do things for political reasons, he would have cut multiple times this year. Remember, his plan originally was to cut three times in 2024, but because the economy has been much stronger than he has anticipated, the numbers have been much better, he has not found any real reason to cut. So, if anything, he's kind of just dragging this out and not cutting as much as he um, says he is. But some of the economic numbers, the inflation's finally come down a little bit, although he's not fully convinced yet. The labor market has finally eclipsed the 4.0 unemployment mark. So it's weakening a little bit. And even housing supply has gone up. I mean, yeah, so like there's more houses out there, especially new houses available, that might eventually drag the housing price down, which is exactly what we want. And Jerome Powell has another reason that he's cited many times before. Fed Chair Powell says holding interest rates high for too long could jeopardize economic growth. And that's right, you can't hold interest rates at 5.5% forever. And he's held them that high forever without regards to politics, but he thinks that's what he should actually do. So I think this uh, tells that he's probably going to cut rates in September. Um, he, and he expressed concern that holding interest rates too high for too long could jeopardize economic growth. Well, you can't really have infinite economic growth forever. So like having slow economic growth for a while is better than having no economic growth or massive amounts of inflation. So I would rather have slow economic growth for a while rather than have the large amounts of inflation we had back in 2021, 2022. And he says, reducing policy strength too late or too little could unduly weaken economic activity and employment, Powell said in remarks for appearances this week on Capitol Hill. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell on Tuesday expressed concern that holding interest rates too high for too long could jeopardize economic growth. So he does want to cut them, but he just thinks the economic numbers are too good right now still for him to cut. He's setting the stage for a two-day two appearance on Capitol Hill this week. The central bank leader said the economy remains strong, as does the labor market, despite some recent cooling. And the recent cooling might actually get him to cut interest rates. Now, it would be awesome if he cut interest rates at the end of this month. But um, with the CPI coming out, if it is actually around 3.0, I think he would actually consider it at the end of July. But if it's 3.1, I think he will definitely wait until September or possibly not cut it all until after the election. Powell cited some easing in inflation, which he said policymakers stay resolute in bringing down to their 2% goal. At the same time, in light of the progress made both in lowering inflation and the cooling the labor market over the past two years, elevated inflation is not the only risk we face. Reducing policy restraint too little or too late could unduly weaken the economic activity and employment. So regardless, we could actually not see um, any kind of real bull market until later this year because a lot of people are waiting for interest rate cuts and not just one interest rate cut, but multiple interest rate cuts. But Powell saying this is very bullish for the market because that means he isn't looking at keeping these high interest rates around for many more months. The commentary coincides with the approaching one year anniversary of the last time the FOMC raised benchmark interest rates. Obviously, um, they raised it last time around, you know, like this time in 2023 because they were still trying to battle inflation. The Fed's overnight borrowing rates uh, currently sits in a range of 5.25 to 5.5, at the highest level in some 23 years, and the product of a 70, uh, 11 consecutive hikes. Now, 23 years, that would take us back to the early 2000s, um, when Bush was president, I think. I think Bush was president during that time. Now, Obama came in in 08. So, like, that was when Bush was president and interest rates were actually higher. Um, after inflation hit its highest level since the early 1980s. Now, 1980s, the interest rates were much higher. There were double digits. And we have higher inflation, so we're not in that 1980s mode right now. Markets expect the Fed to begin cutting rates in September and likely follow up with another quarter percentage point reduction by the end of the year. So we're looking at two interest rate cuts. And I think an interest rate cut will get some good vibes back in the economy, and that will strengthen some confidence, and you'll see some more economic growth. Hopefully, it does not bring back inflation. But I actually didn't think we were going to get cuts until November, but it looks like Powell is going to cut in December. But we also have this um, news here from Crypt Cryptopolitan says, 
Fed's Powell says he's not convinced enough to cut interest rates. So that's signaling that no cuts in July, but we might actually get one in September. If you actually followed through on his original plan of like two years ago, he would cut once in July, once in September, and once in November, but he's not actually doing that right now. So Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell has revealed that he's not ready to pull the trigger on cutting interest rates just yet. And we'll have to see what the CPI is on Thursday. With inflation beginning to cool off and the labor market showing signs of easing, the labor market's very, very important. Powell and the Federal Reserve have been overwhelmed with closely watching all the economic indicators. He said that we've seen some modest progress, but we need more data to be confident that inflation is moving sustainably towards our 2% goal. And if we get like, you know, 3.0, 2.9 this time, I think he might see enough to cut. But like, him saying that the rates can't stay too high for too long, once again, is very, very uh, encouraging. And uh, another piece of encouraging news, if you want to actually buy a house, um, the, the, supply, the supply of houses is actually going up. But it's mainly the supply of newly built houses, not the supply of existing houses. The supply of newly built homes seems to be way too high, so like... Uh, the, the newly built homes can't find buyers, but the existing homes, which are slightly cheaper because new homes generally cost more than existing homes, the existing homes are still in short supply. So those newly built houses prices will come down, hopefully. And as that comes down, that'll drag the rest of the market down as well. So, and that will actually ease inflation as housing prices come down. Um, the, uh, the balance in housing prices comes like when there's like a six month supply of homes. Well, Right now, there's only like a two or three month supply of um, old homes, existing homes, but there's a nine month supply of newly built homes. So yet, the newly built homes are finding it hard to sell, but the already existing homes, they're still selling like hotcakes. I think the newly built homes, those homes will have to come down in price, which will attract more people to them. And then the already existing homes, they'll have to become down in price as well. Some regions are experiencing housing declines, but overall, uh, housing is still going up. But I think it's going to start to cool later this year. So I think overall inflation is definitely going to cool as the year goes on. We'll get a couple of interest rate cuts and that'll be that. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.